This is, this is a, a refined circle, okay? Um, and I think that it, what, it, what, it, what it sort of emphasizes is this idea that there's, you know, so, so no one else in this room is an arrhythmia guy, so you don't know what figure of eight reentry is, but it's a big, it's a, it's a, it's a big deal in my world, and, and this is the one reentrant loop that you actually don't want to interrupt. But, so I leave it at that. It, 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 there's this feedback that goes on all the time between clinical and basic research, and between, and that goes on in the in the in the in the in the, in the electronic record environment as well as anywhere else. So, so uh, plans for May meeting was the real slide. Um, Terry and I and a bunch of other people uh, thought about this problem last night, and. Um, and we thought about themes for the meeting. We thought about, uh, uh, so what, what are the barriers to executing this vision of genomic medicine that we all sort of seem to have in, in, in and at, at, a, at the 50,000 or 500,000 foot view, we sort of share it. And when you get down to the 1,000 foot view, we all have different ideas of what that vision actually looks like. But, but the notion was to, uh, to, uh, to focus the next meeting on, um, on, barriers to executing uh, that kind of vision. So, uh, led better navigating, no, it's, it's this one. So here's the, uh, the slide that Terry thankfully made up for me. Um, the, original, the original theme was going to be standardizing formats. And, and we, uh, we, we talked it through last night, we've talked it through today, and I don't think we're ready to have a day and a half long meeting on standardizing formats. And, and these are, so this is a proposal. This is not, uh, I don't think this is written in, in stone. This has been bothering me the entire meeting. This, this electricity keeps on bouncing back and forth on this laptop. So um, the notion was to focus on uh, the barriers and how, how we might uh, address them. One of the barriers that we keep on hearing about, but I don't think we have a good sense of how that, how it really works in, in, in real time is the payers. Uh, I added the pharmacy benefits people to this list uh, after we had spoken last night, and then, uh, and then perhaps CMS is the sort of ultimate payer. Um, we talk a lot about CLIA and what that means, but uh, we thought it might be useful to hear from people who actually set those standards, and then, uh, and then uh, some of the uh, genomic reference expertise. Uh, as a as a as a, a a way of dealing with again another barrier to incorporating genomic information into the flow of clinical healthcare, uh, the notion of uh, seeing some early deliverables at the May meeting uh, uh, is written down on this slide. Uh, I won't say who wrote it down uh, because we all take uh, we all, I'm standing here presenting it, so so I have to take some credit for it. Uh, I already see Debbie uh, nodding her head no. Well, so so uh, I think the the uh, the way to think about this is to think about what it is we want to accomplish as a group, and what it is that um, uh, what we could what we could uh, do is to think about the barriers to executing the visions that we have and then deal with them. So uh, that was the proposal and, uh, and I think I'm open to comment. Boy, for a, for a, for, for a, I was about to say, not even Mark Retain has anything to say, but that was, I spoke too soon. Mark. I would be interested So maybe, maybe from the University of Wisconsin to start with, right? <laughs> okay, so um, I'm, I'm actually. Uh, um, so what do you mean by that? Right? There's actually apparently a field. There is a field. And what is the problem would you like to hear about? Well, I would like to hear, yeah. for example, if there are research, if, say there's a research whole genome sequence, okay, and a patient's in a study, but their physician Is that 
was that he turned over to the insurance company. I did. Uh, yeah. Erwin? Yeah, uh, Dan. I mean, I'm getting back to the uh, awesome Tiffany standards. And <laughs> the question really is, uh, we had come up with uh, an awful lot, uh, you know, in terms of not only the sequencing data analysis, but also, and what is actually quite a substantial undertaking, as you know, uh, the phenotype standards. Did you include the phenotype? Is that included in the Tiffany standards? And how should we think about this between now and May? Uh, I'll answer that question. Ah, okay. <laughs> Good, because I, <laughs> I'm glad somebody's going to answer in, uh, in a minute. Oh, 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 so the, so so um, the, the uh, we, well, you were in the room last night. Yes. So we, we, we talked a lot about that, and 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 it wasn't a, a major focus of Harry's talk this morning, but I think it it is part of what we we want we want to get accomplished. Now th that said, I'm not sure the Tiffany standards, and I'm not sure where that I'm not even sure that where that word came from. Although we it talked about it. And, uh, all the, the it should be the dungeon standards. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. For those of you who weren't in the room, it was not a well-lit, bright room with a table. It was, it was a little dungeon down in the third sub-basement with a bunch of chairs around the edges and bad fluorescent lighting, and that was it. No pictures on the walls or anything. So, well, next meeting, next time, next time we're going to meet in the ladies' room. So, so, the, so the Tiffany standards. Okay, now I, got, I get it. Uh, you know, would, would probably include a, a section on phenotyping. But I, I guess um, if we're going to develop those kinds of standards, somebody needs to start to work on them, and, uh, and then they can present to us wherever they are uh, when they are there. That and, I, and I will talk about that next steps. So we, Debbie? You know, we need to. So, so it wouldn't be so hard. Yes. Uh, I think that, um, Debbie, I think that there I think there are a couple things here. I mean, I guess uh, CLIA and CAP certification and experts, it would be interesting to engage them in the Tiffany standards kind of thing. Huh. I mean, because you develop a set of standards. If they don't meet any guidelines, then you're in trouble. And uh, we've heard that some people are considering the laboratory guidelines, but maybe not the analysis guidelines. So I think it would be good to have some of this discussion ahead of time. The other thing is I'm not really sure I understand Engage thousand uh, G and genome reference. Is this yeah. genome centers? I just want to be more precise on that. Yeah. yeah. NIST. Yeah, so the, I, I thought the idea came up um, in the breakout last night, and also I was talking to Howard before. Um, uh, I just. It, it's not, it's some of its genome center expertise, but some of its anal analysts that are with, with various consortia. So for example, the 1,000 Genomes Analysis Group have, uh, they have variant callers that they've actually compared to each other and they actually understand the performance. And uh, Howard said, well, it would be. So, 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 I, I would make it more specific. You had, you had your chance. I, I was like really weird. I would make it more specific. So, experts, experts, engage experts on base calling, indel, and CMV calling, and what is the the reference sequence that all uh, that everything's compared to. Can I call it variant? Calling? It's more. It's just more specific. That's all. So you know who you're going after. If I make a spelling mistake, it's because it is. Okay. Uh, so, Kel. <laughs> this is fun. I might even make this a little more specific. So I think like these 10 genomes that people are talking about, I mean, I think one of the things that we've discussed um, at length in various sections of this meeting is the fact that we want to be able to combine data sets from numerous places that are generating, um, you know, cancer genomes for diagnostic purposes, for treatment purposes. And if we could get a set of 10 genomes that we would ask everybody to include. So if they're using the Illumina platform, it would be 10 Illumina platform genomes. If they're using the solid, then it would be 10 solid platform genomes that they would include in their analysis. 
so that eventually there will be the collection of these um, from various sites, I imagine, at some point in the future. And then when we, we could, it's going to be difficult to take that information that we get from people and standardize it. But if everybody had run through the same 10 genomes through their pipelines, then we would have at least an idea of where missing data and stuff of that nature might be in their analysis. More than just genomes, are you going to do ref seek? Yeah, so I mean, this is really a recommendation of the sequencing working group. And if I could get my computer to work, I'm having problems. But let me just try to see if I can get my thing loaded up here and then address that so question. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to save this. And, save it, and, yeah. And, uh, and, and we, shouldn't have got, we shouldn't have gone out of order. That messed things up. That's okay. Yeah, just in this clear cap cert certification experts, um, I'm happy to have them attend, but the uh, AMP and ACMG laboratory guideline development groups around exome sequencing, whole genome sequencing are probably the more expert group. So you want to include them, and often so, so, there's so overlap in the individual people. Who? AMP. What? Sorry. You, you got all this done, okay. Yeah, and ACMG, in addition to CLIA cap. So towards the, uh, the issue about uh, the, the 1,000 Genome Project uh, and to follow on what Adam was, uh, was talking about, uh, this comes out of a conversation Scott and I had last night in, uh, in the bar uh, after you all went to bed. So it was uh, alcohol-induced. Alcohol but sure the, the, the issue yeah, was I, I um, one of the things that's happening as part of the 1,000 Genome Project and maybe other discussions is that there's weekly discussions every week yeah. about analysis strategies. And so for those of us that are interested in leveraging that information, we'd like to be sitting right behind that. So as those analysis strategies get firmed up, then I'd love to be in a position where we could use those in a clinical type laboratory. And so I think that was one of the discussions around what Adam was saying, is that how do we roll this down the, the pipeline so that it goes from 1,000 genome project type, doesn't have to be just 1,000 genomes, down towards clinical. David, David first. So um, on the 1,000 Genome side, those weekly calls do have comparisons. And what happens is immediately people who don't do as well start to make changes. And so one of the things that you emphasized was cassava 1.8 is 1.8, whereas GA2K has, you know, you can do a nightly amp belt and the versions change quite a bit. And um, them getting the message of versioning and some of the needs that, that you might have would be something that's important because I don't think they think about what you might be wanting on a clinical side, and they think nightly builds are great. So, so, that's, so that, I think that's one of the issues, is that, so that if we're not involved in the discussion, there's not some freeze points that could be then uh, evolved downstream that could be used. So, so continual evolution is great, but if there could be some freezes, just like anything else that we freeze in the genome project, that then enables those of us that want to start implementing having that. So some discussion around how to do that, I think, is, is what we were trying to capture. I think there are certain things like SNP calling that's already very good on, say, GATK, and they could freeze that. Indel development, you know, is maybe 80 percent accurate right now, and we're going to have to keep changing it until it's 100 percent. So, and then SVs is even, you know, further away from that. I, I think also the kinds of things you're interested in are not uh, the, the genomics community is calling on a thousand individuals at once and getting probabilities of getting genotypes at low pass. That's different than taking the entire genome of an individual and calling it in the way that you're suggesting for all variants. So I think we need to be pretty clear on what we're asking for information on, but it's not, doesn't mean that those things can't inform uh, this calling. But but I do think that it is a different issue. 